Yo guys, Tanmay of Simple Snippets and in this video tutorial, we are going to continue with our login and registration page in PHP and MySQL and this is basically the third part of the entire playlist. So in the first part, we designed the user interface of the login and registration page in PHP and we also designed the MySQL database and in the second part, we performed the database connectivity and we actually had a small time web application which was basically having functionality of login and registration. So we basically completed that entire web application application but I got some user comments and suggestions wherein some of our subscribers and users wanted to see more HTML tags and fields from which we can store more data. So this video tutorial is basically an enhancement of the same login and registration page which we did in the first two tutorials. So if you haven't really watched the first two tutorials, I would recommend you guys to check those videos first because this is basically just an enhancement of that code and we won't be rewriting a lot of code. So we will be just including some few more HTML tags. And I'll show you how to use the radio buttons as well as the drop down list to store data in the database. So for those who haven't seen the video tutorials, here's the playlist which has two videos and I'll share the link of this playlist in the description of this video so that you can have a look at the first two parts so that the third part is going to be very easy for you to understand. And with that being said, let's see what we did in the first two parts. So let's take a quick recap. So this was the basic login form that we designed wherein we type in some username and password. And when we click on login, it will redirect us to a home page depending upon whether you write in the proper username and password. And we also had a registration page. So if you click on register, as you can see, we have registration form over here. And in this registration form, we were only taking username, password and we were just having a confirmed password field. So here's where the subscribers, user, users and watchers on YouTube suggested me to add a few more HTML fields. For example, if you want to have radio buttons wherein we can select the gender of the user who is registri registering on this page and probably a select or drop down box wherein he can, he or she can select his or her field that is educational qualification basically. So I was like, okay, why not enhance this web application itself? And in this one tutorial, we'll cover that part. So moving on to the database part, you can see we have the PHP my admin console over here and you can see this is our database sample login DB with one table which is user table. The name is user user and you can see we have two fields username and password with two users already registered ABC and the password is one, two, three. So you can see the structure. So we have username and password. So in this case, in this tutorial, we will be enhancing the structure and we'll create a new table which would have some more fields. That is the gender field, the qualification field and we'll also take the full name. So we'll add three more fields to a new table. So this is one thing that we have to do in this tutorial. And just to give you an example, I'll try to log in with the credentials which we saw. So that is ABC and 123. So let's try to log in first and let's see if this form is still works. So we have ABC and I have 123 as password. I'll click on login and there you go. You get the message on the home page that is welcome ABC. So all this functionality was done in part one and part two. So now what we are going to do. So let, I have one more tab opened here and I have actually implemented that new HTML tags. So I'll just show you. So the enhancement that we are going to do is in the registration page. So if you see in this was our old registration page wherein we only had username and password. So if you see the new registration page and click on register. So there you go. We have two more things added. In fact, three more things added. We have full name. We have gender male or female and we have educational qualification which is basically I have had three or four courses in the select drop down box. So we have BSA, IT, BMS, BIT and MCA. Apart from that username, password and confirm password are the same. So this is the functionality or this is the user interface that we want and we want to store all these details in the database. So what we can do is we'll first basically try to create a table in our existing database that is sample login DB. So what you can do is quickly start up your XAMPP server that is the XAMPP software. So type in XAMP, just go to the control panel, double click and you can see you need to start Apache and MySQL services. So Apache is basically the server and MySQL is again the database service. After that, you just need to go to your browser and type in localhost slash php my admin hit enter and you will be given this interface. So in that if you followed all these tutorials that is the first two tutorials you will already have one sample login DB database and if you don't have it you can always create it. You can click on new and create that database and inside this database we have to create a new table. So I'll click new. I'll type the table name as user info table. Now I'll give the first column as ID. What we'll do is we'll keep this auto incremented and keep this as a primary key. This is just for uniqueness and we are not actually 
we're going to use this field the next one we'll say username we'll say it is var care and probably a 50 character long username then we have full name which is again of var care we'll probably give this 100 the next thing what we want to store is we want to store the gender right so we'll say gender this is again var care so we'll give 20 character long now we need, we need to add few more columns so here you can see we have add columns so i'll say add three more columns i'll say go we actually needed only two so we have qualification in this i'll say var care again 50 character long and lastly we have password Again, where care probably 20 to 30 characters long. Okay, so we have one column extra or two co columns extra, but anyways, we're not going to type anything inside and we can just scroll down and hit on save. So our user info table is created and you can see the structure. We have ID, username, full name, gender, qualification and password. So our database is basically created. Now what we'll do is we'll try to change the user interface of this existing registration page. So quickly go to your file directory wherein we have XAMPP HDDocs. So so this is basically inside the windows c drive we have xamp folder and inside that we have hdocs so here you have that sample login page and inside this you have the register.php page so right click on it and say open with notepad plus plus i would recommend you to get a text editor like notepad plus plus or sublime text because you can basically see how the syntax is highlighted over here and it is in a proper structured format okay so as you can see we have our form over here we have the first label as username then password and confirm password so we need to add full name so i'll just copy and paste this label and say full name and we need a input type which is going to be text so below the full name i'll say input name as full name type is text the class input vals is the class that we have given in the css in the previous tutorial so we'll see that and i'll say type your full name and i'll just save this and let's see how the page changes and let's click refresh and there you go we got the full name label and text box okay so the next thing that we need is we need the gender label and two radio buttons so let's go and add that so again copy pasting the label i'll say gender space and we'll just clear this break and now we need to have an input type of radio so the syntax for the radio tag is the same as input type text so you just need to change the input type to radio as you can see we have input type as text over here but in this case the input type is going to be radio there's a class that i've given as radio buttons and i'll show you the css for this later we have given the name as gender and the value as male and we have given one attribute which is checked and the text is going to be male so just let me just save this and i'll show you how this looks on the html page we'll refresh this and there you go you see we have one label added we have the radio button which is already checked and the text and okay i need to give a break over here before that let's add the female wala radio button as well and write female the value should be female now notice that the name for these two radio buttons is same because when we actually fetch the value in the php variable we want only one value out of the two because the gender can be either male or female they cannot be both so that is the reason why i gave the same name to reference both of these input types and only one out of the two which is selected is going to be stored inside the php variable and in, and i'll show you how that looks when we actually go ahead and code in the php i'll type in a break over here and let's save this and refresh the page again okay so we got the gender male and female and in this case i have kept the male radio button as checked so this attribute checked is essentially telling that when we load the register page for the first time the male radio button should be already checked because anyways one of the two is has to be checked right so that's why i have kept male as checked so right now we have the user interface in place we have the full name we have the gender now we need to add the qualification drop down list so let's go ahead and code that go to your registration.php page and below this we'll add the qualification so let me add the label first and say qualification save this now the syntax to create a drop down list in html is as follows we have to type in select then you need to give it a class and basically this class is given if you want to add some custom css to it you can actually ignore this but this name is important you have to give the name as qualification you can give it any any name any unique name because we are going to need this name to reference it in the php variables and inside the select you can see i have not closed the select over here i have closed the select over here 
and inside that you need to add the individual options. So we have option, we have the value that is BSCIT and the text that is need to be shown. Again, we have the second option, we have the value BMS and the text that needs to be shown. So if I save this and refresh this page, you'll see that I got the qualification drop down list. And if I click on it, you can see that I get the four different options that are added. So by default, the first option is selected and we essentially have added the three different columns that we wanted to add. We have the full name, we added the gender and we also add the qualification. So now what we need to do is we need to add the functionality on the sign up button so that all these different parameters are stored inside our newly created table. So we have our table is user info table. So let's see the PHP code that was written in the second part. So we already have some piece of code already written. So we were storing the username and password. So now we need to add few more variables over here. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this and I'll create one, two and three variables. The first one I'll say full name. The second one I'll say gender and the third one I'll say qualification. Okay, so in order to uniquely identify these variables or these values from the text boxes and the drop down as well as the radios, we have given them unique names, right? So for the full name, the input name is full name. So this name attribute and the value is the unique identity to this input text box. So just copy that full name and in the dollar underscore post global variable, just give this full name. For the gender, we have the radio button and the name of these two radio buttons is same and the value is gender. So just copy the gender value and inside that dollar underscore post variable pass that value. And for the qualification, we have given it to the select box. So the name to the select box given is qualification itself. So just copy it and paste it inside this dollar underscore post variable. So now we have got the values inside our PHP variables and we have created three variables new over here. You can see we are getting the values from the form when it is going to be posted. And then we have the old code which we wrote in the second tutorial wherein we check for the password and confirm password matching condition. If it is matching then we check for the username which already exists in the table. So now here we need to make one change because we have created a new table. So the, our table name is user info table. So here we need to change that table name user info table. The column name is same over here username so that can be same. This essentially checks whether the typed username already exists in the database or not. If it exists, then it gives an error. Otherwise, whatever variables, whatever the values that are stored in these variables are then inserted into the table. So we have this insert query as well, which we need to modify. So we have to first change the table name to user info table. Now here we need to pass all the four or all the three new values that we got from the newly created radio button, text box and drop down box. So let me just modify the entire query. Okay, so this is the new query. So insert into user info table values. Now you can notice that the first parameter I'm passing as null because this is the auto incremented ID, this value, which basically is not passed by us, but it is set by the PHP MySQL database engine itself because we've already given it as auto increment. So this is going to be system generated and we don't need to worry about that. So that is the reason why we pass as null. The next value is username. Then we need to pass the full name and not the password. Okay. After full name, we need to pass the gender. Then we need to pass the qualification. So this should be coming over here. And lastly, we need to pass the password. Okay. So this format needs to be according to the columns that you have in the table. So my first column is ID. Then we have username, full name, gender, qualification, password. Similarly, username, full name, gender, qualification, password. And this is pretty much it for this code. So just need to save this and we'll try to test this itself. And there is one last modification that we need to do. And that is inside the login page or the index.php page. So why do we need to make changes over there? So let me just show you why, because we have a select query here as well, but the table name has changed. So it is user info table. And this is the only change that we need to do. Just save this and let's try to run the entire program again. So this was the newly created program. We can see the URL localhost slash sample login page slash register.php. I'll just refresh it once. I'll type in my name that is 
and my subfile I'll give the gender as male I'll give the qualification as MCA I'll say username as ABCD password as 1234 again I'll first type in a wrong password let's see what happens 123 and I'll click on sign up and there you go you get the error password and confirm password does not match entire form is refreshed again I'll give the full name qualification as MCA username as ABCD or ABC password is 123 and this time I'll give the confirmed password correct or equal to the password so I'll give 123 and I'll click on sign up so there you go with the success message that is user registered go to login page to login I'll click on ok and let's check whether the user actually got registered initially we would won't be having any new user but let me just refresh this user info table I'll click on it and there you go guys we got all the values so you can see this ID is auto generated by the MySQL engine itself because we gave it as auto increment and it was system generated you can see the username ABC that I registered you can see my full name you can see my gender the qualification that I selected and the password so this is pretty much working so let's try to actually log in with this newly registered user ID password I'll say ABC I'll say 1 2 and I'll try to log in invalid credentials because I gave the wrong password I'll again say ABC I'll say 1 2 3 and I'll click on login so there you go we logged in successfully it shows a welcome message with my user ID which was stored in the session variable and we covered that session variable in the second tutorial or second part of this tutorial series so you can check that out I'll click on log out and it will log out and go to the login form again I try to click on register you can see we get the new registration form with the newly added input fields that is the full name two radio buttons and the drop down box so that is pretty much about this tutorial and this was basically an enhancement over the existing web application which we created so that's it for this video guys i hope you like this tutorial and you understood how to use radio buttons as well as select box to fetch data from these input tags or input text and store it in the mysql database using php so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel peace